Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I want to introduce you guys to a new concept that I came up with while I was talking with some colleges and some college students. I always get the question, how is it that we can get more experience with taking stuff apart and fixing things, yada yada. Well, it's pretty simple. Look in your own neighborhood. You see, one of the most common places to get material for training yourself is right here, in the trash. That's right, guys. I'm introducing you guys to the Dumpster Dive Challenge because there is gold everywhere, absolutely everywhere. And I have put my wife through college. I Every time I go on vacations and stuff, I actually find stuff in the trash and I fix it and I flip it and I sell it. But guys, the Dumpster Dive Challenge isn't necessarily about fixing something. It's about finding something that's free or cheap, very cheap in fact, and then taking it apart. Because what you, what you should be doing and when you take something apart is learning the skill of taking something apart because it is a skill. And secondly, figuring out why it failed or why they don't want it anymore. Sometimes they don't want it anymore because it's just old. Who knows? Maybe it's not really broke. To which you can turn around and flip it. However, if it is majorly broke, is it a user error? Is it a mechanical failure? Is it a consumable What's going on? Why did somebody want to throw this item out? So guys, this is the dumpster dive challenge. And I am here. I'm about to get in my Jeep. We're going to drive around. We're going to find some cheap to free stuff. And we're going to do a live stream. We're going to take it apart. And we're going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. How do you take it apart? It's essential information to know how to take something apart. And then what went wrong? What went wrong? Why did they want to get rid of it? There's stuff all over the place. And the thing is, is when you're done, you don't have to put it back together. You don't have to fix it. You can if you want, but you don't have to. You can scavenge parts from it if you want for other projects. Hell, I do that all the time. It's fun. That's why I got drawers full of like switches and stuff because you scavenge from things that people didn't want anymore. So anyway, guys, the dumpster dive challenge. It's one of those things. Matter of fact, I see something down here. I'm going to take a walk right now because maybe this is something that I'm just going to take back home and, and use immediately holy cow that's a vibrant vehicle but anyway guys this is the dumpster dive challenge we're going to find some stuff that's free or cheap take it apart see what's going on with it and uh, if we can flip it we're going to flip it if not we're going to diagnose why they got rid of it holy cow i think i found some gold you see what we have here we have a beautiful and very old ceiling fan okay this is an external ceiling fan but it's exactly what i was talking about you see that it's clearly been outdoors for a while. And I think this guy here is going to be a good candidate for taking it apart and seeing what's going on. Anyway, guys, I'm going to take my ceiling fan back home. And what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and take it apart, see what went wrong. Because maybe nothing's really wrong. I don't know. What do you think? There doesn't always have to be something wrong. But we did just score a ceiling fan. Man. Maybe I'll fix this and put it in my workshop. I always want like a little bit of draft of air in the workshop, but uh, let's go ahead and do this. Okay guys, here we go. This is gonna be step two. Step one is to find a device that is being thrown out. Step two is to take it apart and to diagnose why it was being thrown out in the first place. So this here is an exterior ceiling fan. It looks like it's in beautiful condition. Right off the bat, I can tell you that the bearings on this guy are fine. It does clearly have some evidence of not very much use uh, because if it was used very often, you wouldn't have things like the mud daubers. That's easy. That's easy to clean off. In fact, as I take this apart, uh, I might actually do a refurb on this and show you guys exactly what it's like when it's completely redone in a beautiful condition. So guys, uh, it comes with, luckily, all the components. So rare and... Uh, so odd that this was right as I was recording. So this is the ceiling mount yoke right here. And the ceiling mount yoke will hold this guy in a cradle like so. And that's what it gives it the ability to vibrate and move around freely. So it's good they included that, that's beautiful. So this is a beauty ring. And right here is the outer cover which has clearly some sort of um, either overspray from paint or this guy is uh, maybe the paint's flaking off because it's so old. Either way, it's definitely fixable. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and take some of these components off. We're gonna place them off to the side. So remember guys, I told you that this challenge here is about taking something apart. It's not about putting something back together and fixing it. That would be disingenuous. I just want people to take stuff apart and get used to taking stuff apart. And so I'm going to use an impact wrench. This is a motor. That's the motor head right there. And the first thing to do when you have a motor that you might energize is to remove the stuff that would make it less safe. And for me, that's gonna be these blades. So step one, I'm gonna take off all the blades and I'm gonna save the hardware. There's one. Look at the underside. They're beautiful. I haven't even seen the underside yet. This is a nice looking fan. All right, cool. Except for, you know, I, the obvious problems, which would be uh, the dirt. Ah, uh, let's see, I need a good container to store my fasteners. Oh yeah, I keep forgetting that I have these. Wonderful, okay. Let's pull off the rest of the blades. Honestly, these blades just need a scrubbing and they might be out of balance because of the amount of dirt that, I mean, look at this. This is actually a bad design for a fan blade. Not only because the ripples will uh, create ripples in the airflow. So instead of having nice smooth laminar airflow, these ripples will induce drag on the motor and they will not create a smooth, um, forceful airflow. So they're not that great, but I'll tell you what, you can clean them up and they'll still be good. Just a bad initial design itself, that's all. None of these are in tight, none of them whatsoever. Oh. Right, that's it, it's floating. Now that I got the blades off, next is going to be the blade holders, which is these ones right here. Um, but at the same time, I think I wanna pull off the yoke at the top because I want to flip this guy over. It's not really going to be necessary to do this normally, but I'm going to do it for you guys. So it looks like there's some little plastic snaps right here that are kind of holding this together. It's a little flat blade screwdriver to kind of depress those plastic snaps will separate the ring. So I'm going to add a little bit of upward force while I'm doing it. Because as I compress the, the two little snaps, they're going to fall through the hole. That's the trick. And the reason that I'm going to separate this uh, piece right here is because if I'm doing this already, then I might as well maybe fix it up. Even though that's not the objective of this challenge, I'm still probably going to fix it, maybe sell it or install it. Maybe out here in my garage. That'd be cool. Come on. There we go. There we go. There it is. All right. So up here at the top yoke, this here is called a drop tube. And the drop tube is held on by uh, a pin. And mind you, I've only taken a ceiling fan apart once ever before. So when I'm telling you guys about some of this, these features and stuff, this is the whole goal of the challenge. If I've never taken one of these uh, apart before, then how would I know what to look for on the next one? So right here, this yoke, it's, it's being forced up. So first thing I gotta do is drive it down so I have access to the pin. There's a little pin that's holding it together. So in order to get that out, let's go ahead and take a dead blow hammer, which yes, it's down there a little stiff. You can see the pin just fell out right there. You see that? So now that the pin's out, the whole yoke will slide right up and I have full access to the drop tube. So why would you wanna know this little feature? Well, if you have, depending on uh, the angle of the dangle of your ceiling and uh, depending on things like how far away from the fan from the people, you might want to install a longer drop tube. And in order to install a longer drop tube, you have to know that you have to knock out this pin. So maybe someday in you guys' future, you're going to want to know that. Who knows? Again, I would never know it had I not taken one of these apart already. So now this guy right here, it's kind of, oh, the corrosion's kind of holding it on. So I'm going to get a little bit of the lube. Spray it in there. All right. There we go. I'm gonna keep that local because I, th I think I'm gonna have to use that a little more often. And see if I can rotate it. If I can rotate it, then I'll get it up. God, that didn't sound right. All right. 
Here it is. Being particularly stubborn. All right, let's see if, it didn't look like these Phillips screws are tight, yet they were tight. Look at that, all right. I didn't think that they were tight and holding it on there, but apparently they are. So there's a Phillips screw right here that's kind of holding it snug against the drop tube, and then there's the ground screw. So you have to pull the ground screw in order to get it up. Ta-da, and there you go. So this is a ball. And it sits in the yoke, which is down there, and that allows it to rotate and be unbalanced, etc. So uh, I bet you guys never knew that, that your ceiling fans are not hard fixed to your ceiling. They're not. So before I separated this beauty ring from this guy, so I can sand this guy down and repaint it. I can probably just, I don't even have to sand it really, just make sure the dirt's off it and then spray paint right over it. This thing will be beautiful. Okay, so that leaves me with access to the drop tube. Now, why did I have to pull all that off? Well, you can see the lid right here, the lid to my motor, it's got four fasteners, and then it has to pull straight up the drop tube. And here we are. We're at that point right now, guys. Let's pull this guy up. Oh, look, we got a, another series of fasteners. So the drop tube right here, this is the customizable part. You have some that are like 16 inches long, some of them are two feet long, some of them could be even four feet or so long. And other ones like this one are only six inches long. Notice right here, there is a pin. Boop. It's a light tap a tap. So I pulled out a literal cotter pin. And ta -da. I'm gonna go ahead and install that hardware back on there so I don't lose it, okay? Now that drop tube is technically loose and ready to go. Just a couple of these uh, Phillips screws. They're holding it. So if you ever have to change out a drop tube for a different length, here you go. Next, I've got a ring of fasteners up here and then I got the outer ring of fasteners. Let's go ahead and pull the outer ring first. And these, oh, these are the ones that are holding the whole thing together. You see that? Can't tell by the, by the looks of it, but I can tell now. So that means I'm gonna start with the inner ones instead of the outer ones, because as soon as I pull the outer ones up, it's all gonna fall apart, supposedly. So let's start with the inner ones. So mind you, this is also how you improve your own vocabulary when it comes to technical stuff. Because if you don't know what a component's called, you can probably find the original literature for the item that somebody threw out, and if you look up in that literature, they have the nomenclature of all the components, almost always. Look at that. Okay. So, I've never taken one of these apart before, guys. I'm gonna take these two Phillips screws out right here that we're holding the drop tube. Look at this. It is just floating. So the only thing that's keeping it clamshelled together are these super long screws like this. Now these fasteners, are what you normally find on electric motors. So electric motors are usually clamshelled together with super long fasteners like that. Now I bet you this fan works absolutely fine. Now, one of the things I did notice is I don't see a pull strain. Now ceiling fans almost always have some sort of pull string. I'm not seeing one on there. In fact, I see a hole where I think there's a pull string, but did you guys know that that's a, a part that you can buy? The little chain link and the little switch that it activates, you can buy that part. In fact, they're very accessible. You can find them on Amazon, you can go to Home Depot or Lowe's. You can find those all over the place. So let's go ahead and let's see what's inside this motor. Because if the bearings are good, the motor's probably good as well. I bet you, they threw it out because they pulled on it one day and the pull string fell off and they're like, now how do we turn it on? So instead of just replacing that one component, they, they said, let's get rid of it. Me, I'm gonna change it out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix that. So let's go ahead and let's take a look. All right, so with the four outer ones off, the clamshell is now able to open up. You can see that this is just a beauty ring. That's all it is, easy cheesy. So all we gotta do is wash it off with a hose, get rid of the mud dauber nest right there, and maybe spray paint it. Since those are like a yellow, 
um, the each of the the leaves or the fan blades, since they are kind of like a yellow, like a natural bamboo color, then that's what I would paint this is to match those. Beauty ring comes off nice and easy. This is the actual motor head, right? And this guy here, believe it or not, ceiling fans are really kind of weird like that. The shaft for the motor is actually the, the, the stator and the rotor is the outer body, which is attached to the fan blades. It's really weird. On most motors, the outside stationary and the inside is going to be your rotor. Just a little bit of difference. All right, so let's go ahead and move this guy over. Let's flip it over and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Oh, oh, it actually popped out right there. I wouldn't even have to open this up. You see the little pull chain? Oh, oh there it is right there. See the pull chain that's playing peekaboo? That's what happened. Is that guy right there popped off, but if I shake it, look at that. I have access to a couple balls on that chain, you see? Right there by my thumb, I'm kind of holding it. Since I have access to a couple balls of that chain, I could just put one of those chain links on there and we're up and going. But I'm gonna show you guys, we're gonna, we're gonna change that whole thing out. I have some fasteners right here that secure the lid. And this right here is a directional switch. If you guys didn't know, ceiling fans can go either clockwise or counterclockwise. And this switch right here affects whether or not it's a downdraft fan or an updraft fan. You want to use different directions depending on the time of the year. So if it is uh, summertime, you normally want it on downdraft. That's pushing air straight down at the people. And if you want it in the wintertime, um, usually to convect air around a room more effectively, you go around your fans and you switch this little switch so now it's rotating in the opposite direction and now it becomes an updraft fan, which means it's doing this to the air around the room and it circulates hot air much more effectively. There we go. So this is normally how you would change out that switch. You just pull off these fasteners that are holding this can lid on. And now you have full access to those micro switches. How cool. There we go. So here's some wire junctions, pretty neat. There is a, uh, there's a, a start stop capacitor in there for the motor. And right here is the micro switches. See that little dingle hopper that's going through the panel right there? There's one and here's one over here. Super easy to change out. In fact, I can probably pull one out right now. Let's see, I think this guy just screws in, right? Yes, that is exactly how it is held in. All right, let me get some pliers. Let me see if I can rotate that guy. Because mind you, it's already broke, right? So we're going to take this as an opportunity to figure out how to remove them. Because I've never removed these switches before. There you go. So the body to that guy, it unscrews like a through panel. So a through panel is when you have a component like a power switch that sticks through the panel and you have a uh, hold down nut on the other side. That is exactly what this guy's doing. Look at that. Here we go. So that little switch right there, folks, with the little, see that? Oh, it is kind of locking. That's not supposed to do that. So this guy wires in quite effortlessly right here. See these little crimp downs, crimp down terminals. So all I got to do is change those, decrimp those, put the new one in, crimp it in. I have brand new micro switches. I might actually do that. But uh, we're going to continue taking this guy apart because reasons, right? In fact, let's see. Let's cut some of these zip ties out. Gives us a better view of what's going on. This is a particularly serviceable unit because it's got a Molex connector in there. And you see that? And that Molex connector separates the switch body from the motor head. That's kind of cool. Since I can switch out the switch body from the motor head, now I can service the motor head. And this whole switch body will pull off. So if I need to fix one of my switches, I just pull this guy off and we're good. So it's, it looks like I got three screws that hold this guy to the base. Let's just go ahead and pull them. Three, three little fasteners. One, 
There's two. And the third one is underneath this capacitor, which they usually use double-sided tape to stick the capacitor down. It's a square capacitor right here. You see it? Well, there it is. So I just pull on that double-sided tape. It exposes the next fastener. There we go. There we are. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So that this shows me some other things. So this fan was clearly going to be out of balance. You see all this right here. This is all mud dauber. This is wasp, like bees. They they come up here and they find a secluded area and they place their mud and they lay their eggs in there. Not bad at all. I can clean that all out. I'm going to repaint this whole thing anyway. So what's not the love? So this wiring harness right here with the Molex that goes to the motorhead, I do not need to mess with that at all. I could, but one of the things that you should be aware of is the fact that the bearings on this fan are exceptional. So if the bearings on something are fine and it's just the exterior that's boogered up, I don't need to go any further whatsoever to go ahead and redo this guy to sand it down. I got a wire brush that I'll hook up to a drill. I'll wire brush this guy all down. I'll repaint it because I have some special, um, really cool looking spray paint. I'm going to obviously clean out all of the mud dauber. And you can see right here, there are two fasteners that hold each one of these supports. So these are the fan blade supports and there's two, 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 two. You can take all those off. I'm not really going to do that because I'm going to spray paint this as a unit together. So guys, the whole reason that they probably threw this off is because it was out of balance because with mud on certain sides and other sides not having as much mud, it was definitely swaying. And right here, you got sticky switches. See how it's not going back in? Yeah, this is a part that I can definitely buy and I will buy. There it goes. Yeah, see how it's sticky? I could clean that out. I could, maybe I will. I could clean that out. So maybe a little electronics cleaner in there, maybe a little bit of oil. And that guy's gonna be good to go, right? You can see the bottom. Yeah, could be in better condition, right? So no problem. You can see the through panel right there. So that's the through panel and how it threads into the switch. You can see how the switch has a female thread and they go together and that is how it holds the switch in place. Neat stuff, guys. So anyway, guys, that is essentially the entire thing that I was talking about when I say I, uh, <laughs> a challenge to just take something apart and figure out what's going on with it, why did it break, and what can you do to prevent that break going forward. And you could do a whole entire essay on how to prevent this break. Clearly, they have a mud dauber problem. Usually you usually have mud daubers when you have a lot of mud, maybe you have poor drainage in your yard because that mud probably came from the yard. So you gotta fix your drainage problem if you have really squishy grass. So mud daubers, if they don't find a new home in this one, they put up a new ceiling fan, they're gonna do it to that one too. So always, like I said in my rules of repair, rule number 12 is failures are just a symptom. And it's up to a good technician to find out why it failed in the first place. Well, in this case, it failed probably because of the mud daubers. And when they're putting mud and stuff up in there, Mud does not do well with switches, right? Because even the fine particulates of the mud will get up into the switches and that's why they're a little gummed up, right? I think that it didn't come back down. See how the, the switch is a little sticky, probably from the mud and the dust. And what they probably did is they were yanking on it to get it to go back up, you know, to reactivate the switch and they couldn't. You see when I pull it, how it stays down, I do a little tap. See that? Just a little tiny tap and it goes back in. That just needs a little bit of lubrication and it would be absolutely fine. So uh, the real problem is the mud daubers, right? They made it out of balance. The mud is gumming up the switches. So they have to solve a drainage problem in their yard before they can put up a new ceiling fan. Because they put up a new ceiling fan, it's going to happen all over again. Now you can see the culmination of my rules of repair. If you guys haven't seen that video, I, I suggest you check it out. because. If I just put up a ceiling fan, it's going to happen probably over the next summer to the next one. And there goes probably 100 to 200 bucks just like that. So guys, that is the dumpster challenge. All right. I challenge you guys to go out there, find something that somebody's throwing out, take it apart, 
see how to pull it apart, and then to see what went wrong. Why did they throw it out? There's always a reason why they're throwing it out. Maybe it's just vanity. Maybe they just don't like it because it looks ugly. Ah, there's opportunity everywhere, guys. Okay? Good luck, guys. And I look forward to seeing you guys' dumpster challenge. Go find something cheap or free. Take it apart and see why. Okay? That's how you improve your skills. Good luck, guys.